Good afternoon and welcome to Town Meeting Television's continuing coverage of Town Meeting 2021. I'm so glad to be here with Joe Duncan. He's the general manager of the Champlain Water District. And we like to talk to Joe around election time because this year there is a ballot question for a bond issue that is going to be before some of the eight municipalities and 12 water systems that CWD serves. And for our communities, that'll be South Burlington, Essex, Essex Junction, Winiski, Colchester, and Williston, although there are some other communities in the region that may be watching this. So Joe, thank you so much for joining us. And we really look forward to hearing about the improvements that you're gonna be making yet again on this reliable source of clean water for our community. Yeah, very, very happy to be here again, LG. It's always wonderful to uh, be able to meet with you and talk about what we're doing here at the at the district. And yes, we we have an opportunity to continue moving our our master plan forward. We've uh, we've got some items that we have been looking at doing uh, over the next several years, probably three years out. And we've found an opportunity that we believe will allow us to do those now and do it at a very uh, affordable uh cost actually no impact to the uh, to the rates so happy to go through that all and, and let you know what we're what we're looking at doing well while you share your screen i'll just remind people that burlington is not served by the champlain water district they have their own standalone system that's correct that is correct yes and um these the other communities are form a partnership a regional partnership along the lines of the the solid waste district right i mean it's that kind of an entity Yes, it is. Yep, it's uh, it's not a it's not a county uh, as a whole like uh, Solid Waste District, but it is a uh, a, a district of eight communities that have that came together in the '70s to form a um, to form a water district to provide service in response to increasing regulations and a desire to have one source than than multiple sources. Um, and like you said, Burlington uh, has has had their own system and they're able to uh, maintain. Uh, their service, although we are actually tied in with them on emergency uh, interconnect basis. So we have a very good relationship with the Burlington yep. uh, water uh, system. So, um, you know, a little history on us, with yep. kind of in that vein, is uh, we are Vermont's largest water supplier. We did go online in, in 1973. We are a uh, municipal entity. We're, we're chartered as a consolidated water district. And our mission is to provide wholesale water to 12 water systems, and you mentioned most of them, South Burlington, Shelburne, Williston, Essex Town, and Essex Junction with their, their own water systems, Milton, Newski, the village of Jericho, and then Colchester has multiple uh, entities in it, and we serve uh, four of those. Uh, Fire One, which is St. Mike's, Fire Three, which is the village area, Colchester Town, which is Exit 16, and Mallets Bay Water Company, which is a little uh, section off of uh, Mallets Bay founded by, uh, by Winooski. And so those are the systems that we serve and the, the eight communities that they're in are the entities that uh, will be voting on this, this bond. So, uh, and we, it's a million, uh, just to interrupt, it's a million yeah. dollar bond. Is that correct. right, roughly? Yes. Yeah. Yep. General obligation bond. Yep. That's correct. So, um, so we are, it's a, it's a very specific number and, uh, and I'll go into exactly why. It probably sounds kind of odd that it's a very specific number, but there's a very good reason for it. Um, like I mentioned earlier, LG, uh, we've, got a, uh, we've got a master plan that we developed back in uh, 2002, a year plan. So we over the 18 years we've been uh, following it, we're actually in the process of updating it, but we have some, some projects that uh, haven't quite uh, been completed yet. And we want to try and take advantage of that uh, through um, this. And so uh, one of the things that we like to do is we tell, try to take a look at what we have for debt service that's falling off. And as it falls off, we try and backfill it. And um, with the goal of generally keeping our annual debt uh, payments about the same so that as one a debt service payment falls off, we backfill it with another and of the same level. And, really trying to result in no increase in CWD's uniform wholesale rate, but providing the benefit of reinvesting in our, in our infrastructure, which is critical because um, a lot of stuff that we own is buried. Uh, no one really gets to see it, but um, 
when it's uh, when it's becomes a problem, you find out about it real quick, even though it's buried underground. So we try and get ahead of that by by reinvesting before it becomes a problem. Can I ask you just a question here? The red does that indicate the bond that voters passed last last year? Yes, you are correct, LG. So um, the red that you see there, and then there's a little tiny orange as well. Uh, that's barely seen there, but that's the uh, the Essex West project and the Colchester South Tank Loop projects that were both uh, that were both voted on last year. They are under construction. Uh, one of them is under construction right now, the Colchester South Tank Loop, and the Essex West pump station is currently out to bid. So we anticipate the first payment on those bonds being due in uh, in 2023 when the projects are uh, have their one year warranty and ready for the payment. So what you're talking about is it pointing out is that we had anticipated that uh, that drop in, in 2021, 2023, and then like you said, backfilling it again um, with uh, new debt, reinvesting. Excellent. Let's, um, let's talk about what this bond will support. Sure, absolutely. So it is, a like I said, it's a very specific number. It's a uh, $1,090,607. And what we what we came to, and I'll talk about specifically what items are going to be in this in this bond. Um, but the concept is that uh, we've had previous bonds that we've done that have underrun, whether it's because we got a grant or because the money that we um, that the, the project didn't uh, didn't uh, fully get out because of cost savings or bids or whatever it is. And so uh, each year, what we have to do is report that in our audit as a liability of, of this bond, excess bond amount that's sitting out there. Um, we got looking at the municipal market for bonds, as well as our financial model and said, wait a minute, we've, we've got this one, I'll call it 1.1 for simple numbers, $1.1 million already built into our financial model within our current wholesale rate um, but we're not using it. So why don't we take advantage of um, repurposing those bonds to move forward on some of those projects that we're, we were looking at doing two, three years out. So do them today in today's dollars with this bond that's already built into our, into our rate. And so this 1.09607 is, is a specific combination of four bonds that underran. So Can we're I looking yeah, go ahead, Ed. Well, I was, you were talking here that the wholesale rate, what doesn't increase. So do the municipalities mark up the water cost when they pass it on to the, to the taxpayers or the rate payers? Do they add other costs on top of that wholesale rate so that when I get a bill in Winiski, I'm seeing CWD wholesale rate plus something else that the municipality- yes, you are putting on, okay. Yep, so if you think about it, um, we basically are the, the water source. So in, in any particular system, there's you know getting the water, treating the water, and then it's bringing it to people's houses. So we do the part where we bring the water to say Winooski, then Winooski has their own staff, um, their own water mains, their own infrastructure that they maintain. And so they will take, you know, they take the water that they purchase from us and that's part of their, their budget. And then they also have their own employees, their own debt service, their own maintenance that they do. So what you'll see is um, our rate is, uh, is reflected in the overall rate for a particular community. And it's basically a subset of, of it. But um, when you get billed, uh, it doesn't get broken out that way. You just get a, a bill for the overall cost. So it's built in that way, that entry. Exactly. Okay, so you're the water transmission line in effect for those communities. Yep. So you know, our to give you a general sense um, for a typical home, uh, the the average around the state is about uh, sixty five thousand gallons a day, five thousand seven hundred, I think, is the exact number that a, a typical home will use over a uh, sixty five thousand seven hundred gallons over the course of a year. Um, which is like a couple hundred gallons a day. Um, with with that average, we cost the typical user around $157 a year. 
Uh, so if you look at different communities, uh, some communities, you know, the whole bill is somewhere around 200 to 300 um, dollars a year. And so about 150 of that is buying the, uh, the wholesale water. And you're, are you taking this out of the lake, I presume? We are taking it out of the lake. Yes, and that's actually one of the, there's some improvements that we're going to be doing that are specific to how we get the water out of the lake and then what we do with it. So we draw out of Shelburne Bay and uh, we have a uh, pump station down on, uh, on Shelburne Bay in Red Rocks Park. Pump water out of there up to our facility. We run it through a uh, filtering process. Uh, we disinfect it and then we pump it out of our facility leaves South Burlington and then fans out uh, down to Shelburne over to uh, Wills and Jericho and up to Milton. Well, let's hear about those various capital assets that you're gonna be funding with this GEO bond. Sure. So um, we've, got a, uh, we've got a variety of projects uh, of different types and, uh, and purposes. Uh, and so, but they're all aimed at improving system reliability. We've got uh, one of the items that you just mentioned, LG is our, uh, our raw water pump motor and control valve replacements. We've got uh, two pumps that we're looking to rebuild, um, to uh, refinish, uh, replace the motors and replace some of the control valves. And kind of what you see here is um, on the left is the uh, the internals of our pumps uh, before they're, they're finished because we've done a couple of these already. Um, and then you can see the, the refinished internals, the impellers and the internal of the pump can and then the the returning of the, the pump unit back into the uh, into the pump system. And so basically what it is, is our, our goal here is, you know, the motors are 20 years old, so they're towards the end of their life and need to be replaced. Uh, the, the pump cans and the impellers, they wear and they age, they're drawing water out of the lake. So um, the whole idea is to, we can make sure that we maintain the integrity of those, those cans and impellers last longer. So trying to, Make sure and uh, the biggest thing for us is if we can't get water out of the lake we're not getting water to anybody else so that's that's a really critical place uh, for us to be uh, one of the other ones is our particle counting system we we have water that comes into the plant and goes through our filters basically everything that you that you get from the lake uh, all the sediment the the uh, diatomaceous debris and everything all that stuff makes its way into our plant because we're sucking it out of the lake and then we have to filter it out so it comes out nice and clean. Um, so one of the things that we use in, is a, a particle counting system and that particle counting system uh, enables us to identify the quality of the water coming out of the filters and make sure that the filters are, are removing things at the levels that we want them to. And so they're almost uh, 20 years old and need a replacement. So we're looking to use this bond to replace uh, some of those. Um, some of the other, other items that are on here, we've, uh, we had a, a well, uh, it was an old well that when we uh, connected our system back in the 70s, we used, uh, got rid of the well and just used the meter vault as a uh, place to, to put a uh, meter and, and controls in there. Um, it was buried underground, very wet. Um, we wound up putting a building on top of it. And uh, in order to get all the electrical and everything out of the ground up into that building. And now we need to finish off that project by redoing all the interior piping. Um, the whole goal here is uh, we've been able to get into there, clean that space up. We wanna place all the, all the parts and valves that are, that are aged and also corroded and uh, put it into a, a better environment uh, now that we've been able to clean up the, the building a little bit. So. Um, Can that's Can I ask a question? What does a yeah. meter vault do? Sure. So for us, um, the way that we we go from community to community with our water. So we start everything here at the plant, and then eventually it leaves South Burlington, and then it goes from South Burlington, say, to Shelburne, over to Williston, over Colchester, up to Milton. And so we, in order to build each community, we have a meter at where it transitions from one community to another. So essentially what we have is a bunch of gozinas and gozatas. Um, we, min we monitor everything coming out of the plant and we have meter vaults all around South Burlington. And so there between what went out of the meter vaults versus what left our plant is what we built South Burlington. Mm -hmm. And so this particular one is over in, uh, in Colchester. And so it's, a, uh, it's actually a boundary um, 
uh, between uh, between those uh, the cold or South Burlington locations and and also provides uh, flow control um, in order to move the water back and forth in those areas. You know, when you really stop and think about that, there are these giant water pipes under all the streets going from Shelburne Bay to Milton, and that's remarkable. Really, when you think, I mean, you're an engineer, so you think about these things all the time, but this, this is, um, it's, it's quite a feat that we can depend on clean water in this way. And there's so many working parts necessary to make it happen. Yeah, we own, CWD alone owns 54 miles of, of water mains throughout the county. Um, most of them are 24 inch in diameter, but we then, when, where we stop, there's then the water infrastructure for the for the towns that we communities that we serve, and they add up to about 600 miles. So I mean, there's a tremendous amount of of uh, infrastructure in the ground. People don't really pay too much attention to, but uh, it's there when they turn on their tap. Um, they're able to uh, to take advantage of it. And do you, it, in this infrastructure, just quickly, you know, I've read a little bit about the New York City water supply and you know, these giant underground pipes and the fact that the, the fittings on the switching underground are so corroded that they don't even dare turn them on and off. Yep. So do we have the same kind of underwater vaults, underground vaults of pipes where things are happening or, or most of the, the levers and things above ground? No, most of them are below ground. Uh, most everything that, that we own, I mean, it's it's tough to get photos of, of of infrastructure that we own because you know there aren't too many buildings above ground or anything like that. Um, so most everything is buried, uh, you know, on our uh, on the 54 miles of main and the 600 miles of mains of the uh, that the the systems own. Um, it'd be interesting. I should probably get a number on this, but uh, there's there's a there are tons of buried valves, buried vaults. Uh, and the only way to get to them is to dig to them to, to address them. We have a we have a program where we try and uh, replace a couple of valves each year. And um, it's expensive because you've got to dig down to them. And you know, we live in an area where we have frost, so everything is is six feet down. I have a, a, a friend who uh, college mate who works in Florida and everything is three feet down. So that three feet makes a big difference in, in maintaining stuff. But it's, I mean, they even have stuff that's above ground, which is, blows my mind, but it's all buried because it's water and you want to make sure that it's not susceptible to freezing. Exactly. So a uh, plant site perimeter fence is another part of this bond request. Yes. Yeah, we have, um, we have our facility here on Queen City Park Road in, in South Burlington, just, just on the other side of uh, across the road from Burlington. And um, we, uh, our facility is not fenced. And so when you look at, uh, you look at the world of, of physical security and, and uh, heightened awareness and potential for water systems to be uh, targeted for, for different events, um, having, a, uh, having a fence is key. We actually, you wind up driving over here. We we started the the phasing of it um, with putting some new gates in front, so that at least in the uh, in the evening we can isolate our facility from uh, from vehicle entry. But really, um, not that we don't enjoy seeing the public, but the reality is is uh, we need to we should be looking at uh, increased site security here, just given the, the nature of things. So we are looking at putting a fence. Around and you, as you can see, we have a pretty large facility. I think a lot of people don't. There's pros and cons to this. There's it's good that a lot of people don't know what we have back there because, again, from a site security standpoint. But really, we have a lot of uh, infrastructure here, and I don't think people recognize what what's uh, just over the horizon when they drive down Queen City Park. Well, yeah, you see the big white tower um, tank. And that's so commanding that you just kind of forget that there probably is something <laughs> behind it. So that sounds like an important security improvement. And yep. then what's the what's the HS2 VFD? Uh, sure. So that's uh that is the high service two pump uh, variable frequency drive. Um, so all of our um, all of our water that uh, leaves the plant is pumped out 
uh, through either a high service uh, pump or a main service pump. And that's really just a, a matter of main service is a lower um, hydraulic rate. So everything along Shelburne Road goes along main service because you can kind of picture it probably takes a little more energy to pump something uh, up to uh, up to Williston because it's up the hill versus along the, the lake on, on main service. So our high service two pumps are uh, 350 horsepower pump. And so what we want to do is put a variable frequency drive on there. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to, uh, to, to toggle that pump in response to, to variations in flow. Right now it just has, Don has got one speed. Um, but what we've been trying to do with all of our pumps is have them be able to, uh, to vary the flow and a variable frequency drive allows you to do that. So that provides us a little more flexibility in responding because you can imagine that there's parts of the day where where everyone's got their got their faucets on in the morning, taking a shower, and we want to put out more water, and then it slows down before lunchtime and it picks up again. So having these variable frequency drives allows us to do that. So I guess people aren't running home to have lunch and take a shower at the same time. It's not the way people operate. No, no, yeah, we see a spike in the morning, and then we usually see a spike around dinner. But, you know, and it that hasn't changed too much with uh, we thought that we might see some changes with uh, with COVID, but still people tend to get up in the morning and get everything done and then uh, and then seem to come back to, to water use again in the evening. So yeah. that and I guess the other one would be interesting to see there used to be a uh, there used to be a major surge during the Super Bowl halftime. So it'll be interesting to see if that happens again this year. But uh, that's also a very it, it's amazing to look at some of the. The, well, the figures on that. So. Yeah, that's so interesting. So um, just a reminder, viewers were talking about the Champlain Water District's general obligation bond request that's going before some of the um, eight municipalities in our viewing area and in the, the water district itself. So um, Joe, tell us what the time frame is for the building out of this investment. Sure, yeah. So, you know, our, our plan is to do it over three years, uh, but we actually think we can get it done in the next two years. So um, including this summer. So if the bond passes, uh, we would be looking to start these improvements um, this summer and most likely have them done by the end of the construction season of 2022. But there's a potential that it could uh, flow over into, uh, into 2023, although that's not our, our goal. And we are looking to take advantage of uh, what what are historically low rates through the bond bank, which really makes this very attractive. Is it uh, we're looking at a 15-year term. The, the interest rate may change, but right now it's sitting at 1.54%, which is um, for us to be able to take that and have that done within our existing um, our existing rate structure, not impact the wholesale rate. Uh, for us being able to start that now and get it done now, as opposed to starting it three years from now and doing it in, in dollars, you know, three years from now, whatever inflation looks like, then it's a, to us, that's a real advantage. And it, you know, it helps us advance our, our master plan sooner than later by reinvesting in our infrastructure now. So that, um, there are two other items that are covered in the bond. One is the thermocline system and the other is the South filtered water tank. We have about six minutes left, so why don't you sure. tell us I'll about do this. Those. I'll do the South Wil filter water tank first, because that's pretty easy. We've got um, the, the white tank that you referenced, and when you drive up on at the end of Pine Street, that's our North filter water tank. That's a, a concrete tank we put in a couple of years ago. Um, and what it is, is everything that comes that comes out of our plant needs to get disinfected. And, and, and we put it into these filtered water tanks with some chlorine to, to do a final disinfection of all the all the water. The south water tank is our original one. It's a, uh, a glass used to steel metal tank and it was put in in the 90s and we are seeing some leaking going on with that. We've got a poor foundation that needs to be rehabbed and what happens is is the bolt patterns that are on here um, we've got to come in and seal them from the inside and the outside because this is this is a, what's happened recently with our um, Ice buildup and, and water leaking through the bolts. So that's a that's a major project that we we'll, that we want to reinvest in that so we can get it to last for another fifteen to twenty years. So you have the to last, yeah, go ahead. Say you have to drain the whole tank 
I imagine, right? To do that yeah. work, right? Yeah. Okay. That's why the North tank was really critical for us because yeah. we knew we had this problem here at the South filter water tank, but we always need it available. So you couldn't take it offline to make the repairs. Now we have the redundancy of this newer tank, rely solely on the North one and take this one out of service to make those repairs. That's exactly what we need to do. That's great. And the last one's an interesting one. I, I think it is at least. So I'll, I'll, I realize we have the, the time constraints here, so I won't get too detailed into it. But we have probably one of the, the, there used to be another one. So we may only be the only ones left with one, but we have a, a thermocline system. And all that is, is essentially it's a bunch of, of uh, thermometers going from the top of the lake at our intake to the bottom of the lake at our intake. And so what we're doing is we're monitoring the temperature uh, at 10 foot increments across. We sit down about 80 feet deep. And so we're just monitoring the, the temperature there. And so... You know, the, the lake, when it warms up in the in the summer, you get a warm layer on the top and you have the cold water sitting down at the bottom. And then as winter comes along and everything gets closer to, to 33, 32 degrees, you, you just have a constant, um, uh, constant temperature across. But in the summer, it stratifies. And what that does is we monitor that. There's also, too, an interesting, there's, a, there's actually an internal sash in the lake. The lake is constantly rocking, and that's kind of what this this blue and green and yellow kind of show mm -hmm. on an um, day basis. There's, but even on like an hourly basis, it's rocking. And there's a whole another story behind that. But um, but what happens is is we we like to know um, what kind of stratification there is because if there's stratification, typically any any snowmelt rain events, if they do occur, um, and there is stratification, we're probably not going to see any sediment coming into our intake but if it's not stratified and it's all the it's all the uh, a similar um, temperature density it's possible that the sediments can come into our so this thermocline system combined with a uh, a USGS uh, gauging station that we have on the Laplatte the Laplatte's our major contributor to Shelburne Bay so we monitor that and over time we've been able to use flow data from the Laplatte combined with the information from our thermocline tell us whether or not we should make modifications to our filter system in order to adjust for what we might see. So, so that's what the thermocline is. And so um, it's a really important tool. It's, a, it's, an, it's an expensive one, but we'll, we'll be able to take advantage of it through this bond. So we uh, will be voting on town meeting day. Uh, people can go to their their poll locations in South Burlington, Shelburne, Williston, Essex, Milton, Winooski, Village of Jericho, and Colchester, um, and uh, and vote on the article that's shown here on a, a $1.1 million bond with no increase to the wholesale rate. And if people want to know more, we will be having our uh, informational meeting on February 25th at 7 o'clock. It'll be virtual attendance only, and we'll be putting a link on our website to access that. Wonderful. Joe Duncan, General Manager of Champlain Water District, thank you. I'll just also remind voters that you'll be getting your ballots in the mail so you can um, vote before town meeting day itself. And we really appreciate your willingness to present this general obligation bond information. It will be on your ballots in these participating communities. So thank you so much for watching and thanks for staying tuned to town meeting television during town meeting 2021.